everyone, it's Alice and today I'm gonna recommend some books for you while I do a little bit of baking, which is why we're in my kitchen. If you've been around here before, you may have seen one of these videos before because I have done several of them and this time I thought I would just recommend a bunch of summer reads to you. So I got a bunch of requests, some are very specific, some are more general, and I'm just gonna go through as many of them as I can. If you have seen one of these videos before though, you may know that they usually end up being quite long, so you might want to get yourself something to drink, a snack, get comfy, and we should probably just get into it. I should probably tell you what I'm gonna bake, which is something that I've never made before. It says it's like lemon brownies, but I feel like you can't call them brownies when there's no chocolate in them. <laughs> so it's like a lemon blondie or a lemon cake something. Something lemony. It looks really good. I saw it on TikTok and I got roped in, so here we are and I'm gonna try to make it. The recipe seems quite simple and straightforward. It calls for sugar, lemons, obviously both the zest and the juice, a little bit of salt, quite a lot of butter, some eggs, some flour, baking powder, and then there's like a glaze on top. So I think it should be pretty easy. I have already measured out everything just for ease because I'm filming. And it basically just calls for like mixing it all together and baking it, which reminds me, I should put on the oven because I always forget. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna mix everything in this bowl, which is very big and probably too big, but it's what I got, so it's what we're gonna use. The first thing to do is to combine sugar, grated lemon zest, and salt and mix it together, which is pretty easy. And while I do that, let's get into the first recommendation request, which says, a longer book I can dive into and stay in all summer. This is kind of like a specific request, but it's also kind of not, because there are a lot of long books that you can dive into, but I can recommend some of my favorites that I think are suitable for summer. The first one that comes to mind is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. It's not super long, but it is a slightly dense book, and it is the kind of book that you can really dive into and stay in, and you really get to know the characters, you get inside their heads. It feels like the kind of book that sort of consumes you in a way, but I, I mean that in the best way. It is historical fiction and a lot of it is set during summer, so I feel like that's suitable, but it is also a little bit sad. So if you want something else, I can recommend A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. The only thing about this, like, the first bit of it at least is set during summer, I think maybe in Italy if I remember correctly, but the only thing about this book is that the main character is like crazy unlikable. So if you're not into that, this isn't the book for you, but he's also fascinating and I loved following him through like all of the years that we follow him because he is one crazy guy. If you're not into any of those though, I can also recommend They Were Sisters by Dorothy Whipple, which is one of my favorite books by Dorothy Whipple. I love her. And it's also the kind of book that you can really dive into and stay in. We meet these three sisters and they're all quite different and their lives are sort of marked by the men that they meet and marry and they're all very different men. Again, it is a little bit sad at times and sometimes it's a little dark, but like overall, it's very slice of life. You can just go in and spend some time with these people and sort of get lost in their everyday lives. The next request says something creepy and atmospheric that is not Stephen King. And as I have not read a lot of Stephen King, I can recommend you at least one book, the first book that I thought of when I read this, which is a book that has been newly translated into English. It's The Lake of the Dead by Andrea Bjarke, which is actually a Norwegian classic. And I can't vouch for the translation, but I'm just assuming it's good. I read it in Norwegian and if you want something creepy, this is the one for you. The story is about this friend group who like one of the friends goes and sort of disappears up to this cabin and the friends want to go get him because they're worried about him. So they go up to this cabin in the woods and I think it's like by this lake and there is something really creepy about, <laughs> at least to me, 
like certain types of forests and certain types of Norwegian forests and they just maybe I've seen too many horror movies and I've read too many stories but there's something about it that's really creepy and it is I'm pretty sure it is a horror book so I would really recommend that it's not set in summer I feel maybe oh maybe it is actually I don't remember but it is for sure quite creepy this already smells so lemony and delicious which makes me very excited because I have in the past made other types of lemon cakes and sometimes you have to add a lot of extra lemons like more than the recipe calls for for it to actually taste like lemons and not just have like a hint of lemon which isn't what I want I want it to taste very like lemony and tangy this makes me very excited I'm gonna add the eggs now and we're gonna do the next one which is someone wants a book that's dynamic atmospheric and lots happening in the book I have several recommendations for this one as well because again it's like specific but also not specific in some sort of way so it depends on what you want I can recommend I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh this is a slightly older book well it's not super old but I read it quite a while ago but it's a mystery thriller and it's so so good like the twist is just absolutely beyond like it's one of the few mystery thrillers that I've read where I've really genuinely been super surprised by the end. I gotta be honest though, I don't quite remember if there is a lot happening in the book because I remember mostly plot points and I don't know if I'm forgetting about the parts in between, but it is a very good and atmospheric book and I do feel like there is a lot happening in it. I also think the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires <laughs> By Grady Hendrix is a great book for summer it is set during summer it's more like mystery thriller paranormal but it's also set in the 90s and it has like a summery feel to it because of that for some reason and it's very enjoyable and I love the book club and there's like especially one thing in there that's really creepy like there's one scene I still remember they really creep me out so that's a good one if you do actually want a book where a lot and I mean a lot is happening I would recommend The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton which is maybe the most action-packed book I've ever read I don't know if I would call it action-packed but there's just so, so much happening in that book but it does work. Sometimes when I read those kinds of books, it doesn't work, but this is like my main one that has so much going on in it and it works so well. It's hard to pinpoint a genre for this one, but basically the story is about this guy who is stuck in a time loop with all of these other people, but he's the only one who's aware of it. And he has been told by someone that if he can solve like who is gonna kill this particular person at the end of this day that he keeps reliving. If he can figure out who has done it, he gets out of the loop, I guess. I don't wanna reveal too much, but there is. Like if you like plot, this is a great book, but also the characters are quite good. So it has a lot working for it. It can be a little bit confusing, but once you get into it, it really sucks you in. Now it's time to add the butter which is melted but also it has cooled down and then we're gonna add the lemon juice I think again very simple recipe like it feels like a simple one to make which I like I don't like super complicated baking next we have someone who wants a book on doctor slash therapist slash patient relationships that is not romantic and I struggled with this one a little bit. I only kind of have one recommendation and I don't feel like it's the best recommendation because you may have already read it. But the only one I could think of was The Silent Patient, which I read quite a while ago. And I, I feel like that book was super popular a couple of, like, a couple of years ago. And I enjoyed it. I really liked it. I don't remember that much from it, but I am pretty sure that there is like a patient in it that has gone mute and we follow the psychiatrist or psychologist that is trying to get this person to talk and then there's like some backstory that's quite interesting so that's my only recommendation for that I'm assuming you want fiction and not 
nonfiction, although for nonfiction I don't have a lot except like medical books, which is maybe not exactly what you want. And it's not about therapists, it's very much like doctors and medical stuff and yeah, I think the only one I have is The Silent Patient. I do feel like it would be a good book for summer though. There is something about like mysteries and thrillers for summer that I really, really like. Then someone writes fun and light but with a serious topic at the core. This is a tricky one because it depends a little bit if you want fiction or non-fiction. I think the only novel that I can think of is Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce, which like regardless, it's one of my favorite books and I would recommend it for everyone. It's the perfect book for summer, just either way. But that is quite like, it is a little bit lighter. It is quite fun, but it does end up being a little bit heartbreaking. And it's about unlikely friendship and it's just the loveliest book. For nonfiction, I would recommend From Here to Eternity by Caitlin Dowdy which is a book about death and death rituals, which I would say is pretty serious. But there's something about the tone and like the way Dowdy writes that makes it really fun. And there's a lot of humor in that book. And it's very educational, but it's, it's very funny as well. You do have to like a certain type of like morbid humor though, but if you're into it, you're gonna love this. I do think I'm not the only one who associates like mysteries and thrillers with summer because I got quite a lot of requests for those kinds of books and there are a couple in a row now. The first one says a mystery to read at the beach. I feel like for me I don't know if I really know what a beach read is. <laughs> I don't know but I think you could read any mystery at the beach. The first thing that came to mind for me was The Appeal by Janice Hallett because I feel like it's a book that's quite easy to dip in and out of but it's very engaging and it's a relatively quick read and it doesn't it doesn't require that much from you but you do get to like theorize as to what's happening in that book it's an epistolary novel so it's written in texts and emails and all like those kinds of notes and stuff like that and it's a very engaging book but i also feel like you can easily like go in and out of it which i don't know why i think you would need that at the beach but maybe if you want to like take a swim in between, you're going to be fine. The next one says a cozy summery mystery. And for this one, I thought of Crocodile on the Sandbank by Elizabeth Peters, in part because it's a very cozy like book and it's one of my favorite cozy mystery series, but also because the main portion of it is set in Egypt, which I feel like is quite summery. And there's like, there's something about like hot, summer nights that makes me like I associate that with this book and I feel like it's appropriate for summer obviously and there's like a mommy on the loose and the main character is lovely there's a little bit of like banter between the main characters it's a very cozy book it's perfect for summer I feel another cozy mystery request says a nice cozy mystery set in a small village that's not Agatha Christie my main go-to for this is The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. Of course, it's one of my favorite, again, one of my favorite cozy mystery series. And it's set in a small retirement village. And we follow these, these old people who just don't give a flying fluff about anything. And they get involved in all sorts of things that they shouldn't be involved in. And I love it. And the setting is amazing. And it is very cozy and just so good. All right, we're now gonna add the flour and I'm gonna sift it in because that's what the recipe calls for. This is one of those things that I don't always do, but it does always turn out better when I actually sift like the flour and stuff. So we're gonna put this in and I think that's kind of it. We're gonna put it on a baking sheet and into the oven. I think the reason I so often skip this like sifting part is that I feel like it's gonna take longer but it doesn't really it literally takes like 30 seconds <laughs> the recipe says to fold in the flour so i guess i'm gonna do that the next book recommendation request though says elite high society maybe secret society slash club with witty smart likable characters and i'm not gonna lie this one is surprisingly difficult for me my issue with this is that a lot of the books that I've read of this kind 
do not have likable characters. Like my main go-tos for this would be like Secret History, which is not technically like secret society, but they are in a weird kind of club. But I wouldn't say that the characters in that are likable. I also thought of Ninth House that has a very unlikable main character, so that doesn't work. I think maybe Babel is my best recommendation for this. I think the main character is more likable in that than in any of the other books of this kind that I've read. He does end up doing some questionable things though, so I don't know. I guess maybe also if we were villains would be an okay recommendation. I don't remember if the main character of that is particularly likable. Other than that, I haven't read that many books that I can think of that are like high society though. Like the only ones I can think of are like dark academia type books. Next though, someone wants a book set in Italy, which I have a couple of books for you. Again, depends on what kind of genre you want. The first one that I thought of was Angels and Demons by Dan Brown, which is set entirely in Rome, I'm pretty sure. And I feel like that's a good book for summer because again, it's the kind of book you can just dive into. It's a little bit longer, but it is very engaging. I realize Dan Brown is not everyone's cup of tea, but I stand by the fact that Angels and Demons is a really, I think it's a really good book. And I think the twist and the end and all of that is just excellent. So I would recommend that. If you've ever been to Rome, you're gonna recognize a lot of the places because it is very, like it is set, like the scenes are set in actual, places and some of it is based on like actual stuff which is pretty cool. The second one that I thought of for this was Call Me By Your Name which is a romance book. It's beautiful, it's very summery, it's like romance but also coming of age. Beautiful, beautiful book. I love the writing. If you want something a little bit lighter though I can recommend The Snack Thief which is a kind of cozy mystery. It's set in Sicily, I'm pretty sure, and it follows this detective, and it's very Italian, so if you want to feel like you're in Italy, this is a great one to read. And then I got a request that made me chuckle. It says, something short, so I can say I read a book this summer. A very short book that I'm sure you're gonna enjoy is The Little Snake, which is like maybe 70 pages long. It's short, it's quick, it's very sweet, and it's a very good book for being so short. It also kind of takes you on a trip to several places in the world, which I also feel like is perfect for summer. Okay, so this batter is looking quite good, so I'm gonna transfer it to this baking thingy. This is the only square thing I have, so hopefully it works. And then we're just gonna chuck it in the oven. This smells so good. This needs to bake for 25 to 30 minutes if you want it slightly jiggly and if you want a less fudgy texture cook for another 5 to 10 minutes. I feel like that's a big like there's a big difference between 25 minutes and 40 minutes but I'm just gonna put this in and I want it to be like not too jiggly but I also don't want it to be dry so I guess I'm gonna try with 30 minutes and see how it goes. I'm gonna wait to make the glaze until I've taken the cake out of the oven and it's starting to cool down because I'm pretty sure you can't put it on until the cake is completely cool, which is gonna take a while, but that's fine. In the meanwhile, we can run through some more of these. The next one you would think would be easy to answer, but I don't know if I feel like it's that easy. It says a book that screams Alice the Book Castle. I don't know. I'm assuming it would be like one of my favorite books, but I have no idea how I'm perceived by other people and what other people think would scream, like what book would scream my name. I have no idea. The only thing that I could think of was The Secret History by Donna Tartt because when people ask me what my favorite book is, that is my go-to answer. But I don't know if that's, I don't know if it screams me. I don't really know. I feel like maybe it would be like a cozy mystery that would be more appropriate or something like <laughs> something about a 75 year old woman who only crochets and reads 
and bakes because that is gonna be my final form in life, I think. Then we have another one that made me laugh. It says, something to give me a break from everyone when I'm on family holiday, nonfiction, if you have it. It's a really funny thing about family holidays because it's like the best thing, but also the worst thing at the same time. There's something about traveling with your family that is very particular, probably because you know them so well, but there's a lot of, dynamics and stuff that you have to like take into consideration and it's not always super relaxing so i understand the need to get a little bit of a break i've noted down three books the first one is mythos by stephen fry which is just like a lighter kind of fun but very engaging book it's like a retelling of the greek myths and like the greek gods had so much drama and so much going on and the way that Stephen Fry retells it is really funny and I really like it so I feel like that's a good book to like escape into you can escape into someone else's drama instead of dealing with what could possibly be your own drama I also think Over the Edge of the World by Lawrence Burgreen is a great book to escape into it is more dense but it is one of my favorite nonfiction books that I've ever read it's about the first circumnavigation of the globe. It's like adventure, but also there's a lot of history in it. And it's very, very interesting. And that book taught me a lot that I didn't know. And I've also read it twice actually, and it was just as good the second time. You can also read The Spy and the Traitor by Ben McIntyre, which is another excellent nonfiction book. It's about this like double agent KGB spy who like turned, I guess he turned away from the Soviet Union and started working for the English and it's a very interesting story and again you learn a lot from it, there's a lot of history in it and like the end of this book is super super exciting when you don't know the story and I remember when I got to like the final 150 pages I couldn't put the book down because it was so good. Then we've got a couple of requests that I very much sympathize with. <laughs> the first one says a book about a cold place to forget the summer heat and I feel you. I am also not super crazy about high temperatures some people just really thrive in them. I am not one of those people. I'm not built for that. I think I'm built for cold more than anything. And when it like gets above like 26 degrees or like 27 degrees and there's no wind, I am miserable. So I feel like maybe reading a book set in a cold place would help maybe. <laughs> I put down two books for this. We have The Ice Palace by Tarja Vesos, which is it's set in a literal ice palace, which may cool you down. It is a little bit of a sad book though, so you might have to prepare yourself for that. The second one that I thought of was The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, which is set in cold, cold, cold historical Russia. And there's like snow, 10 months of the year, and there's also um, like an ice king. I don't remember what he's called in the book, but there's a lot of snow and ice in that book and it's a very, very lovely read. The second one that is also kind of similar asks for a thriller set in a chilly place with freezing temperature to help me survive the heat. For this, I would recommend The Snowman by Yul Nesper. This is like a mystery thriller and we follow this detective who starts piecing together all of these different cases where there's like a creepy snowman in the backyard of all of these like murder in the backyard in the on like the crime scene of all of these different murders there's always a snowman and it always happens every year on the first day of snow and our detective is the first to like piece all of this together that is such a good thriller it's one of my favorites that i've ever read it is so creepy but it's so so good and the snowmen are creepy as hell. <laughs> then we've got more cozy requests. Someone wants books like Robert Thurgood's Death in Paradise series. I struggled with this a little bit more than you might think because one of the things that makes that series so good is the setting and I don't quite have that kind of setting for you 
but I can recommend, again, The Thursday Murder Club. I think if you like the Death in Paradise series, you'll like The Thursday Murder Club, but also you may have already read it. I can also recommend another book by Robert Thorogood, which is The Marlowe Murder Club, which is quite similar to The Thursday Murder Club, like those books are quite similar, and I probably prefer The Thursday Murder Club. I feel like I'm saying murder club a lot, <laughs> and it sounds weird now, but those are my best recommendations for that. I feel like it's... Those books are so... They're so particular and they're ridiculous in this amazing way that's very hard to find anywhere else. The next one, though, I surprisingly have a recommendation for. It is a very obvious choice, but it's the only thing that I have. Someone wants funny and romantic read. Enemies to lovers is my favorite trope, but nothing too cringe. I am as of filming this, reading Book Lovers by Emily Henry, which is very unlike me to read these kinds of books, but I'm reading it for like a vlog, so I'm not gonna tell you too much, but I am gonna recommend it because it does have a kind of like enemies to lovers thing. I am not entirely sure if it is, if there is a lot of cringe in it because I haven't finished it yet, but so far it's not too cringy, which I find surprising. I'm surprisingly like surprisingly I'm getting on with that book fairly well I have some thoughts but yeah I think that would be my only recommendation really because I haven't read a lot of romance books I do realize it's relatively likely that you've read that book though so if anyone has any other like enemies to lover trope romance recommendations in the comments let me know I would also kind of like to know as well because I think I might like that trope as well which I'm finding surprising but if anyone has any recommendations leave them in the comments for both this person and for me. We've got more requests for cozy things. Someone wants a cozy mystery set somewhere hot. The first one is of course a book we've already talked about The Death in Paradise series by Robert Thorogood. This is set on a fictional island in the Caribbean and we follow this detective who's English and he hates the heat and he wears like wool suits all year which is ridiculous but I love his team and I love how they love this detective but they also kind of make fun of him and the first one is like a locked room mystery and it is quite engaging but like the main part of this book is like the island and the island life and how different our main character is from this like chill lifestyle he's so the opposite of it which makes it really funny i would also recommend the widows of malabar hill by sujata massey this is the first book in the praveen mystery series and we follow this female lawyer who investigates cases that no one else can really investigate and that no one else cares about usually it involves women it's set in the 1920s so no one cares about women back then i guess but it's set in bombay which is generally at least in the books quite hot all right so the cake is out of the oven you may be able to see it in the background and i let it bake for 30 minutes and now it needs to cool down and i don't know if i let it bake for long enough or for short enough i have no idea hopefully it's not dry I always struggle with like brownies as well when to take them out of the oven but with brownies I've made them so many times that I can sort of figure it out but with this there's like a completely different texture so I don't know if I got it right and also it's very thin this cake it's not it didn't rise very much which I guess brownies don't do either so I don't know hopefully I did it right I have no idea but it needs to cool down and in the meanwhile I'm gonna make the glaze which is basically just powdered sugar and lemon juice. As I do that, we're gonna do the next request, which says, a book with exquisite writing and summer vibes, please. Where the Crawdads Sing is like the perfect book for this request. It's very summery. It has like a, it's historical fiction and it's set in North Carolina, but it's like set out in the marshes for the most part. And we follow this girl as she's growing up and it does go through several seasons but a lot of it is set during the summer and the way that it's described in this book, like I could picture the whole 
movie of this and like the summary like how it looks and all of that and the way that the setting is described is just immaculate it's also a beautiful story about a young girl who has quite a rough life and is going through a lot and it's such a good book there is a little bit of a mystery element to it as well but that's not the main thing like the main thing is about this girl who is living out in the marsh and it's beautiful. Another book that has summer vibes though, but very different kinds of summer vibes is The Lost Man by Jane Harper. This is set in Australia out in like the desert and it has more of that like wasteland summer feeling to it and it's a mystery and there's like a lot of family dynamics and it's a little bit of like a slower mystery which also makes me think of summer because there's something about summer heat that makes everything go really slowly. So if you don't want like a coming of age story, you can read that, which is more of a mystery. Then someone wants a book for art lovers. Think walks at the museum vibes. I would also like these kinds of recommendations. So if anyone thinks of a book just now, let me know in the comments because I would like to read more of those. The only book that I can think of that is like, kind of fitting for this is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. There is something about that book that gives me that kind of vibe and also the book is in part about this painting. There must be like someone who has read a more fitting book that is like more specific to like museums. I would like to read that as well but my recommendation for this is The Goldfinch which is a really really good book. Next we're gonna do one that I think Maybe I have misunderstood, but it says something that feels like pure sunshine, preferably a page turner. And I'm guessing with like pure sunshine, that's like meant to be a positive thing. Like a person can be like pure sunshine and it's like a super happy, lovely person. What I thought of when I read this is that pure sunshine means heat and it's horrible. <laughs> So my recommendation is based on that, which is probably not what you want, but the book that came to mind is The Dry by Jane Harper, which is a mystery book set in Australia during a heat wave. And I don't think this is what you wanted, but it's all I got for you. I haven't read a lot of books with like pure sunshine type characters because usually everything I read is really dark and depressing. So the recipe says that this should be quite thick and it is so I guess this is done but like I mentioned I can't put this on until the cake is cooled down and it's not cool yet this is my least favorite part of like baking or making food is like when you're reaching the end and you have to wait it is torture and I hate it but I am gonna try to let it completely cool until I finish this cake and we're just gonna I'm gonna distract myself by doing the rest of these. Next, someone wants something sweet, like Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sukigawa, which is one of my favorite books. This is also a little bit of a tough one because I don't know if I've really read any books that really give me the same feeling as that book. It's very particular. And there is something about the fact that it's like a Japanese translated book that like gives it a certain quality, but I would recommend again, Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce, on, like, because both of those books are about unlikely friendship, and they have some of the same qualities to them, and it is a very sweet book. It's more of, like, an adventure book, so it it's, like, slightly higher paced, I would say, than Sweet Bean Paste, which is very calm and quiet, but it is a very good book, and it's a book about friendship, and it's also... Without giving anything away, there is something similar to how both of those books end. Then someone wants a heartwarming book about an old man. For this, I would recommend The Housekeeper and the Professor. This is such a lovely, lovely book. It's about this man who, like, quite some time ago, he was in an accident and he hurt his head. And it means that his memory is impaired, so he can only remember the last, like, hour or so and everything else he just forgets. And we meet this woman who has a son who starts taking care of him as like a job. 
And it's a story of unlikely friendship, but we also explore this old man. And it's such a lovely book and it's written really well. It is heartwarming, but it, it is a little bit heart-wrenching as well. So it's not, it's not all <laughs> rainbows and sunshine, but it is very, very good. Then someone wants something incredibly silly that's still really well written. This one is a tough one. It's a tough combination and I have two that I can think of. The first one I've already mentioned like twice in this video. It's the Death in Paradise series. Those books are like ridiculous and silly, but they are very good. I don't know if, I don't remember that much about the writing, but I would say that the writing is pretty good if it can pull off such ridiculous characters. And then I think The Smoke Hunter by Jacqueline Benson has a lot of silliness. Like it's just very over the top. But again, it does work because the writing is quite good and you're invested in the characters or everything, but it really does like, at the end, it goes like completely over the top. <laughs> We're almost at the end now, but the next one I really like, it says, a book set in one of those unforgettable summer where time seems to stop. The first one that I thought of was The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides, because that book has a kind of like suffocating summer heat feeling to it. There's something very particular about the writing that makes it feel that way. It's quite atmospheric. The writing is not for everyone and not everyone gets on with that book, but that really gives me that like suppressing summer heat feeling. I also think The Strays by Emily Bitto would be a good read for this. That is like a coming of age story about a girl who becomes friends with these sisters and there's something about some of the time that they spend together that feels like a pivotal part of the character's life, which is what makes me think of Unforgettable Summers. I think a lot of people have had summers that feel like they shift everything. And I think that The Virgin Suicides also has this kind of thing where there's something that happens that sort of changes your whole life. So I think The Strays is a really good one for that as well. Another one that is a little bit of a different one and doesn't have quite that vibe but has a very summery feeling to it is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I don't remember that much from that book. I think I didn't love the ending. This is also this is like what happens every time I read one of her books is that I'm a little bit disappointed with the ending but it is set at the end of summer and this person is having like an end of summer party and there's something about that that feels like one of those unforgettable moments. Lastly, we have a request that feels like it's coming from my kind of person. It says a classic perfect for the summer slash autumn transition. I'm glad I'm not the only person who's already thinking of autumn and dreaming of it. <laughs> but my recommendation for this would actually be Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, which you may think would be like a pure autumn book, but it actually kind of isn't because there is a part of this book that is set during summer and there's like all of these storms and there's thunder and there's something about like the heat of it that reminds me of summer but it is also like very gothic which makes me think of fall so i think frankenstein is actually a great book to read in like that in between period when you don't quite know what time of year it is maybe i'm just using it as an excuse to recommend that book though because i love it it also does start with a winter scene but we're just gonna ignore that. Like the middle part I feel is very suitable for like that in-between period. It has been 84 years, <laughs> or you know, just a little over an hour. It took a really long time for the cake to cool down, but it is cool now. And I put the glaze on, so it's done. She's a little flat but I think it's supposed to look like this, so it's okay, and it does smell very good. So I think we should taste it and see. Having cut it and looking at it, it looks exactly like the recipe, so maybe I actually did do it right. This is pretty good, quite lemony. I may, if I make it another time, I might put a little bit more lemon in just because I love lemons. But if you're the kind of person who sometimes when you eat cake and stuff, you say, oh, that's nice, it's not too sweet. 
I think you would like this. It is more cakey than brownie, I would say, but maybe it's because I kept it in the oven for a little bit too long. I don't mind though, it's still very good and it's not dry, which is the goal. I'm gonna go eat some more of this though because it's delicious and that's kind of the end of the video. If you were looking for some book recommendations for summer, I hope you found some here. And if you can think of like the perfect summer book that you've read that you would like to recommend, I would love to see it in the comments. Or if you can think of like any particular books for some of the requests that I got, I'm sure people would love to see it. As always, thank you very much for hanging out with me today and I will see you soon. Bye. You know, I did say to my colleagues before the weekend that I was gonna do some baking and that I would bring some in for them on Monday. So I should probably not eat this whole thing myself, but I don't know, it's really good. Mm.